Hi everyone, I'm Pat from The Sewing Studio and today I'm going to share with you a quick and easy tutorial of a tote bag that's fun and easy to make. This is a unique pattern designed by Holly and me that you will want to make over and over. In front of me, I have some samples of some of the ones that we made and when I'm done showing you, I'm going to have six quick and easy steps for this project to show you. The first one here, these are all rifle paper company fabrics. They're cottons and they're canvases. This is the first one. I embellished it with a bow. These are great for gifts and gift giving. If you like the bow, I have a tutorial on our YouTube channel on how to make that. Next I have, again, a little bit more elegant. This is absolutely beautiful, this bag. This is one of my favorites. Then I have, I loved making this bag. This is yarn couched on here. And again, I added my own touch to this bag. So I love this bag. And then another one, this is the Nutcracker rifle paper fabric. So now that I've shown you my samples, let's get started with our six quick and easy steps. Are you ready? Step one, you're gonna need two thirds of a yard of your theme fabric, a quarter yard of the vinyl for the bottom, a third of a yard of double-sided fusible batting, one and two third yards of webbing for the handles, and you'll cut that in half for two straps, a yard of trim if desired, and with some vinyls, depending on the vinyl, you may want to grab your Teflon foot. So let's get started. This is step one. This is the top of my bag. Let me show you a sample of the bag I'm going to be showing you how to make. So again, rifle paper fabric with vinyl on the bottom. You are going to cut your fabric 24 inches long by 18 inches wide. Then you're gonna fold your fabric in half. So this is the top of the bag, it's what it's gonna look like. And what I do is on my fold line, I press it. Why do I press it? Because when I open it up, when I come back and open it up, I am going to insert my double-sided fusible fleece in here. And if I have my fold line pressed nicely, I know how far to take it up. So I like to use double-sided fusible fleece. If you have something else at home, you can use that too, but you might, if it's not fused, you may want to quilt it. So tuck in your fleece. I, what I do with this bag, is I cut my fleece a little bit shorter than the actual length of my bag so I have less bulk inside my seam at the bottom. So I insert that, now I fold this down. I take it to my ironing board and I press it well. Once you've got your um, fabric fused well, and you can see now what I'm creating here is a bag that I don't have to line. It's kind of self-lined. So once I've got it pressed really well, this is the time where if you're creative, you may want to do some embellishment. If you're an embroiderer, you can throw a monogram on there. You could, you could quilt it in the hoop if you want. You can be creative with your blank canvas here. Or um, I, I have a sample here of one that I want to show you. Let me just throw it on top here. This one I yarn couched. So I used this yarn, which I love variegated yarn and I love variegated thread because it blends so well with so many different prints and color combinations. I used my foot with my couching sole. 
So I've actually got it, a piece of yarn threaded through here. And honestly, the little hole on my couching foot looks very small. You almost can't believe that yarn would fit in there. But I like using yarn because it's very forgiving and it, it travels through that hole and goes straight under the needle very easily. So I change my sole plate and put my couching plate on. Okay, and I also, if you want to do something like this, you want to um, get a ruler and mark. This bag I actually marked with a two inch grid and I use a chalkener or a friction pen. But as you can see, it's very effective and it adds a nice layer. I have another one here. If you're a quilter and if you have not used the double-sided fusible fleece, this one here, we quilted. I'm gonna hold it up so that we can get a closer look. And you can see that it's beautifully quilted. So be creative. Step two, now we're gonna work on the bottom of the bag. So what I've done is I have here my vinyl. This is felt back vinyl. And it's very soft, very soft, very easy to sew. So it's easy to work with. This is really a very easy bag to make, remember that. So I have the bottom of my bag is 18 inches wide by five and a half inches long here. I like to box my corners. If you don't know what boxing a corner means, it means doing this to the bottom of your corner. I like it especially with vinyl because it helps for my bag to be able to sit and it gives it a little bit of structure. Okay, so you're going to, on these particular bags, I cut one and a half inch square out of the bottom of both my, both sides of my bag. So once I have it cut, this is what it looks like. You cut them out. If you want to box your corner a little bit more, um, you can certainly do that and it'll give you a wider seat, so to speak, on the bottom of your bag. Okay, step three, you're gonna stitch the top of the bag to the bottom of the bag. So I have the top of my bag placed here, and I have the bottom of my bag here. So now is the time if you want to add something decorative in between here, we, this actually is just a bias um, grunge by Moda that we carry by the yard. Or you can cut your own. I have an example here, the Nutcracker one. We actually cut a strip of fabric from the collection and it's not on the bias, but you can see what a beautiful detail it adds to this bag. So, you could find something maybe laying around your house that you want to use up. You could also insert a rickrack or put it on there afterwards. As you can see, I have a lot of options of what I can do. So if I wanted to insert something like this, what I would do is pin it on there. You don't want to make, when you're working with vinyl, you don't want to use pins because you might leave your holes marked in your vinyl. You, you'll want to use some clips. But what I would do is sandwich it in there and hold it, and then I would take the top, line it up, clip it, and sew it. And I usually use about a half inch seam allowance for these bags. So now you're gonna sew it, and then what you're gonna end up with is something like this. Okay, are you ready? Step number four, we're gonna stitch this bag together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the webbing. To do this, we measured, we marked the center of one side of our bag, and we, we marked the center here. I've got it marked with a pin. We measured three inches out to either side, and we marked and we placed our webbing down. 
Once you've done that, you may want to use a little bit of double-sided sticky tape because again, you don't really want to use pins and leave holes in your vinyl. So you can see here that we use clips to hold our webbing and then we placed the corners. You can use the corners that you cut out from the bottom of the bag. If your corners aren't big enough because you're using wider webbing, just go ahead and cut a larger square to place over it. And again, you can use your double-sided sticky tape to hold it down. And you're gonna stitch this down on either side. And then you'll see on my one side of my bag here that we actually surged the edges, the sides, before we stitched the front to the back. Why did we do that? Because I felt like if we were to stitch the front to the back together and then surge the sides once we were done with that, there I would have a lot of, I would have a really thick, one thick bulky seam. And I prefer to surge this and surge the other side and then stitch about a half an inch in on either side. And then I've got a nice, I do have a nice clean finish on the sides of my bags. So you're gonna put your two sides, right sides together, right sides together, stitch down, and then you're going to come to the bottom. You're gonna leave this open, don't stitch here. You're gonna stitch straight across here. So down the sides, straight across, and you're done, you're ready for the next step. Step number five, we're gonna box the corners on this bag. So I have a sample here of what boxing a corner is. So we've got our side seams stitched together and we have this opening before we box them. This will be open. So what you would do is you would take your bag and you pinch it you need to line up, you're gonna line up your seams, let me see here. You're gonna line up your seams, line it up all together. And what I like to do is I like to, see how nice, straight, I've got it lined up. You can put a pin through your seam allowance and make sure that your seam allowance here is lined up with your seam allowance down below on your bottom one. So I, to reduce bulk, I like to flip. I'll have one seam allowance going in one direction, and then on the bottom, I'll have my seam allowance going in the other direction. Once I've got that done, you can put a couple of clips in there, take it to the sewing machine, and you are going to sew it down. Now, just a tip for you. If you're gonna um, put a lot of stress on this seam, if, the, if you're gonna use this bag a lot, which I'm sure everybody is, because they come out so beautiful, you might want to reinforce it by just stitching inside that seam one more time. Just stay fairly close to your other seam but that will help reinforce your boxed corners by just stitching one more time. Once you've stitched both of your corners, you turn it inside out, you can turn your bag inside out. And look at how nice the bottom of your bag will look. You see what I've got here? So now I have a boxed corner and you can see on the inside how nice it looks. Okay, step number six, you're gonna turn your bag right side out, stuff it with goodies, and start your next one. So here in front of me, I have the bags that I have made. I'm gonna go through them again, so I wanna remind you that we have kits available while supplies last for these bags. So here we go. Our first one, now the bow is not included in that. Now remember that I have a tutorial for making this bow. Then we have this beautiful one that I couched with yarn. 
I love this one. The, the pink is very delicate. It's just, it came together beautifully, everything that I put on there. And then of course, we have the Nutcracker with the bright red straps and using the fabric from the collection, the orange and the gold metallic as a divider down there as a trim. And then last but not least, the beautiful holly, I guess they're like little berries just with the green leaves and the beautiful gold vinyl. So everything I showed you is available in store or online at sewing.net. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.